one of the questions is what causes moya moya? Where does it come from? And one of the difficult things with this is I think that uh, although people like to lump uh, the disease of moya moya as a single entity, just like you might lump chicken pox uh, or pneumonia, I think one of the problems is, is that moya moya is actually a collection of many different diseases that all end up with the same common problem. And the analogy I would give you, for example, is a sore throat. A sore throat is a symptom. It's something that you see, uh, but it can be caused by many different things. You can have strep, you can have an infection, you could even have trauma in the throat. And similarly, I think this narrowing of blood vessels probably have many different causes that all end up with the same end result. We found from our series here at Children's that about 6% or so of cases are truly genetic, where there are multiple family members that all have the same disease. And clearly this is a mutation in a gene, and there have been a number of different genes which we've looked at and others have looked at that seem to suggest an underlying cause for this that can be traced. There are other causes that we know uh, stimulate the formation of moya moya vessels. For example, patients who have had brain tumors in the past um, may have been treated with radiation, and it seems that in some kids, the radiation, while life-saving and able to prevent the recurrence of brain tumors, may also result in the uh, formation of moya moya disease down the road. A and people distinguish the true genetic moya moya disease, which they think is based on a mutation, from what's called moya moya syndrome, which is the same look picture on the x-rays uh, but may be caused by different sources and we see this for example in kids with sickle cell disease, kids with Down syndrome, kids with neurofibromatosis. Uh, there are many different types of conditions which may not be true pure so-called moya moya disease but may end up with the same syndrome and the good news about it is as varied as this disease is uh, pretty much all of them respond extremely well to the same surgical uh, treatment. And uh, the bottom line is if the pipes are bad and we can put in better pipes, uh, we can treat the underlying problem. And what we've shown is that we can take a stroke rate of somewhere in the order of 60 to 90 percent over five years for severe or fatal strokes. And with the surgery that we perform here, uh, our published data would suggest that we can knock that risk down to 4 percent or less. So it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. And we see a near 15 to 20 fold improvement in helping to save these kids' lives and reduce their risk of stroke.